Okay, so we're going to show you how to clean a saltwater chlorinator salt cell. A lot of the cells have this design here, where it's a canister up on the top. Very important with saltwater chlorinators that your cell as is um, installed in a way so that it creates its own little um, air pocket up here. So with this chlorinator, there is actually a little cap uh, here just over the wires. Don't mind what the friendly spiders have added in there. And we need to turn the filter off. And then we simply unscrew this here. And then we pull this part of the cell, this internal part of the cell here comes out. And now you'll have the cell and the cell plates in your hand at this point. I'm not going to pull that out because I don't want to have to go through all the hassle of making sure it's resealed. Uh, then you can mix it in salt cell um, cleaner, or if you want, you can actually wash it in uh, a one tenth um, solution of hydrochloric acid of water. So that's 10 parts of water, one part of acid. And uh, be very careful using hydrochloric acid. Only do it if you know what you're doing, gloves, glasses, and don't cheap out on the gloves and glasses with hydrochloric acid. Um, so you can do it 10 to 1, or it's much safer to use the uh, um, salt cell cleaning solution. Now the plates, they are actually got some platinum on them, and they make that hydrogen gas and chlorine gas. You never scrape the um, plates with anything metallic, because anything metallic is going to be damaging the surface. What you've paid the big money for the cell, you're going to damage it. So something wooden, a wooden spatula or a wooden ruler, uh, if you need to scrape it, um, but to be quite honest, just to soak it, then give it a bit of a tap, a bit of a light bang, and hopefully the calcium will come off. If you're getting a lot of white buildup inside, it's most likely calcium. Maybe you've used calcium-based chlorine, um, calcium hypochlorite in your swimming pool before you put your chlorinator on. Uh, no one ever, ever should be using the standard cheap calcium-based chlorine once you've got a salt chlorinator because they're not compatible with each other. So use sodium hypochlorite if you want to give, that's liquid chlorine, if you want to give it a shock dose. Or you can also use the sodium-based granular chlorine, which is sodium dichlor isocyanurate. Sorry for the big words, but that'll be written on the label, no matter what country you're in. That's excellent um, for dosing saltwater pools. Liquid chlorine, the little bit of residue that's left behind, is actually um, salt. Once the liquid chlorine goes and kills the germs, and does its bit, kills the algae, it turns back to salt. So obviously that's a helpful um, residue with a saltwater chlorinator. And the sodium dichloroisosoneurate, that's the granular sodium-based chlorine, it actually has a little bit of stabilizer in it. So it's an agent, that's the isosoneuric acid, and that's an agent which actually uh, stabilizes your chlorine and makes it not so susceptible to disappearing as soon as the sun comes out and hits it. So again, awesome extra thing to have in a saltwater chlorinated pool. So yeah, you pull it out, you give it a wash, you put it back. We put our lock nut back on, put our connections back on. Don't go dipping your connections in acid or acid cleaner. So you've got electrical connections here, so don't immerse the whole cell and get acid onto those electrical connections. That'll just cause corrosion. Put it all back together, turn it on and you're done. Now, when it comes to cleaning a cell, modern chlorinators, this guy here is actually self-cleaning. The way to tell that, so you've got two um, positive leads coming in here and a common or an earth here. This blue one is actually that little gas tang I mentioned about the gas detection thing. Um, when you've got two, if you've got just one red and one blue, it's a normal cell and they do tend to build up the calcium. But this is a self-cleaning cell. You've got two, so it can actually reverse the polarity and it actually gets the calcium not to just continue to plate up, build up, build up. It actually can clean itself by switching to the other anode and, and operating in reverse. So if you've got a low calcium level and you've got a self-cleaning cell, you really don't have to clean it, if at all, maybe only once a year. But again, if you've got a pool which has got a really high calcium level, then you may need to clean it more often. Uh, and there are other ways you can chemically um, reduce the calcium level of a pool. You can uh, just in very brief, what you can do is put a very, very big dose of um, sodium bicarbonate in, which raises the total alkalinity, which will cause the calcium to drop out and settle. Then you leave it for a few days to settle. You can even add some flock in as well. Um, is sometimes helpful. And then 
some of the calcium that settles will be like a white formation on the bottom which you could vacuum out as long as there's no algae or anything to make it stick and some of it is just going to be a heavy solution of calcium on the bottom of the pool what you then need to do is vacuum the pool to waste not vacuum it through the filter but vacuum the pool to waste and then you will get a huge amount of that calcium level out of your swimming pool another way is just simply to dilute the pool if you pump half the water out and then refill it with fresh you've halved your calcium level uh, provided the water coming back in um, is low in calcium if you're on bore water that's a different situation check with your local pool shop um, if your water's a bit different but if you're on rainwater or reservoir water it's normally very low on calcium okay clean the salt cell straightforward um, it's all there and uh, yeah have a look on the my swimming pool playlist there's lots of helpful videos subscribe and uh, you'll get all of your pool tips coming straight to you thank you very much